Let's look at an example of how to state and simplify the negation of a couple state, uh, statements here. So first, the statement P and Q implies Q or S. I want to state the negation of this. Now, there's a real easy way to do that. That is just to group them together and put a negation in front. However, I also need to simplify this. And to do that, I'm going to have to use De Morgan's laws and a couple other tricks. So first, notice that this statement is an implication and we're saying the implication is false. An implication is only false if the first part is true and the second part is false. So the first thing we might write down is to say what the first part is. The first part is P and Q. And then we also need the second part to be false. So and the second part is false. So not R or S. We can actually simplify this a little further. P and Q, that's good, so we'll just leave that. P and Q. And is good, but we can distribute this negation past this disjunction, past this or. And to do that, we have to use De Morgan's Law. So this becomes not R and not S. And those are grouped together like that. So there's the negation of the given statement. All right, let's look at one now that has quantifiers. So here we are looking at for all x there is a y such that y is less than x or for every z x is less than or equal to z. Again, the negation of this is simply negation of that statement. Now let's simplify. We need to pass the negation past the quantifiers. When you do that, the quantifiers switch. So we will have there is an x such that for all y and then the negation of the thing being quantified. So that is everything that was in those parentheses. y is less than x or for all z x is less than or equal to z. Like so. All right, well, let's simplify further. Again, now we are taking a negation and we're passing it over an OR statement. De Morgan's laws tell us how to do that. We have there is an X for all Y. That stays the same. And now neg the negation of Y is less than X. Well, that is Y is greater than or equal to X. The OR becomes an AND. and then we are left with the negation of for all z x is less than or equal to z. Well we can simplify a little further. I'll just write everything down again but now I need to pass this negation over the for all z. It becomes a there is a z and then I have the negation of x is less than or equal to z. Well that says x is greater than z. And there we have the negation. All right, let's do this um, for a couple more examples. And now let's just look at examples written in plain old English. So for every integer n, if n is even, then n over 2 is even. This is false, so we want to say that. We want to say it is false that for every integer n, if n is even, then n over 2 is even. And we can simplify that statement as follows. For every integer n, well, that's a for all n. When we pass the negation through, it becomes there is an n. So there is an integer n. There is an integer n. And now what do we have? We have if n is even, then n over 2 is even. We want to say that implication is false. An implication is false in only one case, when the if part is true and the then part is false. So we want to say there is an integer n such that we want the first part to be true. n is even and the second part is false. So and n over 2 is even, we want that to be false, so n over 2 is not even, also known as 
odd. And there's the negation. If it's false that for every integer n, if n is even, then n over 2 is even, then it is true that there is an integer n such that n is even, but n over 2 is odd. All right, one more. There are integers a and b such that every composite number is divisible by either a or b. Also a false statement. So if we want to show it's false, what do we have to show? Here we go. Let me move that over. Well, again, we want to say it is false that and the whole, sta the whole statement. So there are integers a and b such that, well, those are there exists a and there exists b. The negation, when we pass it over that quantifier, becomes a for all. So we would say for every integer a and b. The next part of the statement is such that every composite number, so that's for all composite numbers. Well again we're passing the negation through so that for all becomes there exists. So what we have so far for every integer a and b there is a composite number Oops, forgot an e there. There is a composite number, and now we want to say it is not divisible by either a or b. So which, try that again, which is not divisible is not divisible by a or b. So it's not divisible by a and is not divisible by b. Using De Morgan's law to change the or to an and when I pass the negation through. And then we can check, does this make sense? We want to say it's not the case that there are integers a and b such that every composite number is divisible by either a or b. That means for every integer a and b, for every integers a and b, there is a composite number which is not divisible by a and also not divisible by b. And that gets at it. All right. Well, I hope this has helped. Thanks for watching.